Shalom, Yashrala. This is your brother Dawada coming back at you with this here truth again. First and foremost, I want to give all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. The bar of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth and that rule well. In salutation and much love for you, Akim, pushing this truth and sincerity on the four corners of the earth and enduring afflictions to feed and edify the elect. <clears throat> so I want to jump into this here topic dealing with uh, when Yahweh Shah is going to return, all right? Because, you know, like the scriptures say, no man knows the day nor the hour when, you know, when, when Yahweh Shah is going to return. And that's true. All right. The only person that knows uh, the day and the hour is the most high himself, Yahweh. All right. Yahweh Shah don't even know the day or the hour he's coming back. Right. <clears throat> but nevertheless, when you when the disciples asked Yahweh Shah when he was returning, he gave them signs to be able to look at, you know, like uh, you can read that in what is it, Matthew 24. Right. Uh, you go hear about wars and rumors of wars and things like that. Well, I want to touch in on basically that their point, you know, we know. Basically, when Yahweh Shah is going to return, as far as, you know, the season he's going to return in, all right? Not the day or the hour, all right? But basically, you know, Yahweh Shah is going to return in the midst of World War III, all right? Just like, you know, we can say that we know that he's going to return in World War III according to the precepts, but just like we don't know the day or the hour where we'll, the day or the hour World War III is going to kick off or, you know, how long World War III is going to be lasting before he actually comes back, you know? But we do know that he's going to come back in the midst of World War III, all right? And we're going to jump into the precepts to back that up. All right, so we're going to start here in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, all right, and at the top, you know, and this is basically the time frame that we're in right now. All right, so let's go uh, Psalms 2 and 1. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? All right, so um, basically what's going on here is you have the times that we're living in right now, all right? So you see as, you know, not only are we telling you that Babylon is about to fall and is falling as we speak now, but these other nations know that as well, too, from a... Um, how do you say from like a political standpoint, you know, they, these governments and stuff, they know that it's the end all be all for America. All right. So what's going on right now is what you're seeing is, you know, these different nations are uh, jockeying for position. You know, they, they trying to see who's up next to rule, you know, and not only that, like you can see this and also um, a lot of these alliances that's being made, you know, like uh, if you understand what the uh, uh, the central banking is or the, uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund is or uh, the petrodollar is, right? Now, you understand, if you understand that, you understand that this is one of the ways that America has hegemony over these other nations, all right? Because it's like, um, you know, it, it, it's pretty much, uh, you know, like the pimp in the hoe situation, you know what I'm saying? The pimp gonna make the hoe go out there and do all the work, but then she's not gonna have none of the money. So whenever she needs something, she gotta come back to the pimp for it. Therefore, she gonna always be under subjection unto him, right? So the same thing happens with these other nations. They wind up, uh, you know, situations happen in these nations and then America goes over there and like, oh, we'll help you out. We'll help you out. But um, for instance, Iraq, you know, they went over there and blew Iraq completely to hell and back. Right. But then it was like, you know what? You know, we, we understand we fucked y'all up. So what we'll do is we'll come over. We'll send our, our contractors over here, our construction companies over here, and we'll rebuild everything over here. All right. And not only that. <clears throat> will, uh, uh, you know, send people over here to run or whatever, whatnot, you know, but then they'll make the bill so damn big that they know that these people can't pay it back. So these people wind up forfeiting their, uh, you know, their, their, their resources, you know, or they have to come under that, uh, that, you know, basically become a puppet to America, you know, but nevertheless, you know, this is the same shit that the, the Esau pulled with the, uh, subprime mortgage situation with the housing market crash, right? He allowed you to get these houses that you, he knew that you couldn't afford. All right. And gave you uh, low interest rates then all of a sudden he jacked them all up to where he wound up not only taking your house but lowered your credit score and took everything else that you had you know but nevertheless this is what you see going on right now with um like i said with you understand like the petrodollar and the international monetary fund the central banks and all this you have certain nations like uh for instance uh you got what brazil russia um what is it brazil russia uh is it india China and South Africa, the BRICS nations, all right? They're basically trying to create a, a, a new central banking system that cuts America out, all right? You also have these other nations like uh, Venezuela, who's trying to trade their um, their oil in uh, uh, basically uh, cryptocurrency because America has sanctions on them to where they can't get the money off of the oil that they're selling, which trickles down to feed they, their people, all right? But nevertheless, you see these other nations are also militarily-wise, you know, because America is the number one was the number one supplier of, of arms to the rest of the world. But guess what? You're now seeing Russia step up and starting to replace them. All right, so you're starting to see all these different nations, all right? They're starting to jock for position as far as China, Russia, so on and so forth. They're all making these deals or whatever, whatnot. You even see the EU doing this. You know, everybody's getting tired of, of Esau's rulership, all right? Mainly these Americans' rulership. So 
And they also see that America's falling. So what are they doing? They jockey for position. Now, nah, the Chinese going to rule next. Now, nah, the Russians going to rule next. Now, nah, the, the Arabs is going to rule next. So this is what you have going on with these different nations. All right. So I'm going to read it again. Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. All right. So basically, again, you know, you're breaking it down as we read through it. They're in the midst of seeing Babylon falling. Right. So they know that Babylon is the world power right now. So they know that once Babylon falls, there's going to somebody has to come and take that place. Right. But then they also are in tune with knowing about, knowing about the prophecies. All right. They know that Yahushua is going to come back. All right. This is why these other nations, you know, when they sit down. You know, these other nations, they talk about certain things like as far as, hey, Ronald Reagan tell you about this shit with the Star Wars program. You know, they all know that Yahushua is returning in them chariots. Right. So secretly, these other nations, hey, they they all got it in mind. Like, all right, well, shit. If all of a sudden these chariots do come back, we'll band together and we'll fight against them. All right. And we can grab that in the scriptures as well, too. But nevertheless, they understand basically that all right, once Babylon fall. You know, the Lord's going to rule, but they say, nah, fuck that. We finna rule. You know, again, you having these different nations jockeying for position. Who going to rule next? Right. So it says uh, Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. All right. So, again, they trying to upset prophecy. All right. They trying to uh, uh, fill that position. All right. Before uh, uh, the Lord comes back and return, they're like, nah, we're going to slide up in here next. All right. Verse four says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. All right. Because, again, verse one, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? All right. That's that's vanity, man. That's like that's like saying, you know, as a male, oh, I can't even use that that perspective nowadays because it's some weird shit going on. But in a regular sense, that's like a man saying. I'm going to get myself pregnant, you know, and this dude is die hard serious on this shit, right? Uh, I'm going to get myself pregnant. Like, if you look at this motherfucker, you just be like, that's a vain opinion, bro. That's that's not going to happen. Like, you can say whatever you want to say, but that's just not going to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you, you think you finna, that's just not going to happen, you know? But nevertheless, that's pretty much, you know, like having a vain opinion, you know? It don't even matter, you know what I'm saying? Like a person that's on death row with no chance of uh, 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 getting out ever, you know what I'm saying? Planning what he finna do. Next year on his birthday, yeah, next year I'm finna go to Disney World, I'm gonna go to whatever, whatnot, I'm like, bro, you imagining some vain ass shit, yeah, man, I'm about to get the new Charger, bro, you in jail, you doing a, you, 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 hey, you got uh, the death penalty, basically, you know what I'm saying, and you, you about to get put to death next month, what you mean in two, three months, or next year you finna go buy a brand new Charger, bro, you, you, you just bugging out, you know, that's a vain thing, so this is why the Lord is laughing at they ass, like, bro, y'all niggas is stupid, you know what I'm saying, but hey, Ultimately, it's according to the will of the Most High, all right, and, and the prophecies, because this is also going to play a part in the end all be all, all right. This is going to lead into World War Three, as they see in America starting to get weak. Are thou become weak as we, all right? And then also, is this the man that that did destroy the earth, that opened out the house of the prisoners? So now you start to see these different. Let the weak say I'm strong. You see these other nations getting tired of America, uh, America's hegemony and bullying everybody else around. They now starting to stand up to try to knock America out the way. But they also know once they do that, there's going to be a vacuum for power, a power grab. All right. Now you have these different nations again, jockeying for position. Who's going to be next? All right. Which is going to lead into World War Three. All right. You know, spoiler alert. First, uh, matter of fact, well, let me just keep reading. Verse five. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. All right. And uh, well, verse eight, I love this verse. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Right. So first and foremost, you know, Yahweh is going to get, you know, these heathen. All right. For his inheritance. And then the uttermost part, he's going to be reigning over everything, man. All right. The only person that's going to be over top of him is the most high himself, man. Yahweh. All right. And then it's going to be Yahweh shot, man. And everybody else is going to be up under him, man. All right. So. Again, you have to put this in context. Uh, Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the, the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, saying, uh, against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Right. So basically, again, they know that the Lord coming back and they know that this is the prophecy that Yahweh is going to reign. But they trying to upset prophecy. Right. Verse 4 says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Uh the Lord shall have them in derision, all right, so they they about to get caught up, you know what I'm saying, this is like a, a, a you got a damn dog on a damn, a chain, and he all vicious barking, and drool coming out, I'm like, bro, 
you're not getting off that damn big ass chamber. No matter how hard you bark and this, you just choking yourself out. Like you a stupid dog. You know what I'm saying? This is basically what's going on uh, uh, in this scenario. All right. So from there, we're going to go to. This is Psalms 46. I'm going to just get to the point. Oh, let me go back to Psalms 2. Psalms 2 and uh, 1. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So this is what they're raging about, right? They, they, they all upset about, you know, uh, being next in line for rulership. So let's go back to Psalms 46 to see how that ends out for them. All right, Psalms 46. We're going to get to the point here. This is uh, Psalms 46 and verse 6. It says, the heathen rage... All right, the heathen rage. So that's the same thing that's going on now. These these heathen, all these different nations, they're going to be gathered together. We'll grab that as well, too, Lord willing. They're going to be gathered together over in the Middle East for this final battle of World War III. All right, but they, in their minds, they think once the smoke clear, we're going to be, we're going to come out a uh, 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 superior or, or we're going to reign supreme after this whole thing. Once the smoke clear, we're going to be ruling next. The Chinese is saying this, the Russians, so on and so forth. Everybody's saying this, right? So it said, hey, America even saying, no, our, our house is going to go on forever. We're going to be here at the, at the end of the day. We, we The continuity of, uh, of government, really, is deeper than that. Hey, Esau want to rule forever, man. All right? So this is uh, Psalms 46 and 6. It says, the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved. All right? So World War III is going on, right? It says, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. All right? So in the midst of this year, World War III, let me just keep reading. Verse 7. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Come behold the works of, of Yahweh, what desolation he have made in the earth. All right. So the Lord is coming back to judge, right? The Most High sending Yahweh shot back to judge, all right? And take these crowns up off these kings' heads, all right? Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Lock in. Give me one second. Bear with me, brethren. Uh, this is what I want. Um. Nineteen, so lock it, brother. Give me one second. Mm. Right here. This is um. Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, right? You read about that, uh, uh, um, uh, what is that? Revelation 6, right? It says, and behold a white horse, pure power, right? Them chariots when, when the Lord returns. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, which Lord willing will grab that. That's the same account in the book of Second Ezra, right? Because they break it all the way down, man. All right, it says, um, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and and in righteousness, he does, does judge and make war. So, hey, there's already going to be war. We just read it. We, we were just reading about it. We're going to go back to it, Lord willing, how they're going to be jockeying for position in the midst of World War III, battling it out, trying to take Babylon out of, the, out of the way and set themselves up, right? So when the Lord returns, all right, he gonna, he's going to come forth uh, uh, to judge and to make war, all right? And who is he judging? He's uh, Lord willing, we'll grab that too. You know, he's going to bring them down to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, all right? So uh, it says, uh, verse 12, his eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. All right. So this is the description of Yahweh Shah, but on his head was many crowns. Why are there many crowns on his head? All right. Because he's going to come through and take the crowns off these king's heads. All right. All the people, these Edomites that's ruling all these different nations that's ruling whatever, whatnot. The Lord is about to take their crowns up off their head or meaning taking them out of their position of power. All right. And put them into subjection. All right. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the word of the most high. Right. So his vesture dipped in blood. Right. You can read that in the scriptures as well, too. Who is this that coming from Edom from Edom? All right. With his uh, garments dyed uh, red, you know, as, he, as if he was stepping on the wine press, you know. 
Verse uh, 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. All right. So this is talking about the Lord coming back with all his, uh, uh, the host of the, 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 heav the armies of heaven, man. All these other chariots is going to be coming along with the Lord. All right. To, to, to judge and make war. All right. Chariots is going to have a twofold role. They're going to come for, for salvation and damnation. All right. They're going to save the elect and then destroy everybody else. Basically, now, some people going to wind up still living. But in the midst of World War Three, as we're getting into, this is when the Lord's coming back. All right. And he's going to uh, uh, judge and make war in the midst of World War Three. All right. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. All right. Not just one particular nation, but all the nations. All right. Because of the fact that they're going to already they, he's bringing them. That's why they all being gathered to the Middle East right now. All right, for World War Three. All right, he he he's. It's like this, man. You trying to uh, 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 mow down a whole bunch of people, right? But they just running around. You know what I'm saying? There's one here, one way over there, one over here. You got to keep aiming and so on and so forth. But if you line them all up, you know what I'm saying? Like they say, crabs in the barrel. You know what I'm saying? Imagine that. You trying to, you know, uh, 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 take a like a, you know, let's just say you're trying to shoot some crabs in the damn water, right? But there's a bunch of crabs all over the goddamn place. You got to aim and chase these bitches down. But however, if there was crabs in like a damn box or something like that, you could just aim at the box and just start shooting. They're going to all get hit. All right. This is basically what the Lord is doing. Bring them over to, uh, uh, to the Middle East. All right. And they're going to be going to war with each other. But then ultimately, the Lord is going to come back and, and des destroy them all. All right. So it says, uh, verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword. And with it, he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and tread at the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right. So basically, you know, um, man, I would love to read this as well, too. But, you know, for time's sake, you know, because you can read about that. And what is that? Ezekiel 39, I believe it is, where you're talking about prepare for them that 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 feast. All right. Called all the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the field. All right. And this is what it's talking about, man. The Lord is about to hey, the whole Middle East is going to be consumed in bodies, man. All right. But it's going to be in the midst of World War Three, man. It's not like the Lord's going to return just like when everybody's at peace or whatever, whatnot, or just people just chilling or whatever, whatnot. No, uh, the most high is, is, is the drama king, man, the king of drama, man. All right. This is his movie. He's going to let it uh, build up. And at, at the climax, this is when, it, you know, the end all be all is going to happen, man. All right. So um, where are we reading it? Oh, Psalms 46. Psalms 46 and 6. Going back to that, it says the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The power, the Yahweh of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Come behold the works of Yahweh with desolation he have made in the earth. All right, so when the Lord sent Yahweh Shah back, look, he going, he going, hey, think not that I come to send peace, but I came to send a sword, all right? It says, uh, come behold the works of Yahweh with desolation he have made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. All right, so that should be a dead giveaway right there that, you know, um, you're not going to have the Lord return before World War III because how, how is he going to make wars to cease? But then you got World War III or Armageddon that's going to take place, man. All right. But nevertheless, this is when he's coming back. All right. It says, uh, he maketh the wars to cease and upon the end of the earth, unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cut up the spirit in asunder. He burneth the chariots in, in the fire. All right. So these are all what? Military uh, uh, equipment and vehicles, man. They're going to all be deployed over in the Middle East. All right. And this is when the Lord's going to come back, man. And he's going to start bringing his destruction on their ass, man. All right. Verse 15. Be still and know that I am Yahweh. I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. All right. So, you know, reading through this, you, you understand that, you know, the heathens raged. The kingdoms were moved. All right. So when we found out why the heathens was raging. All right. Because they jockeying for position. After the fall of Babylon and see who's going to rule up next. And this what you see these nations is doing right now, man. They preparing for the fall of Babylon and who's going to take over, you know. All right. If Babylon fall, you know, that's the international monetary fund system, uh, petrodollar and so on and so forth. We got to have to have a replacement. So I eat the BRICS nations and so on and so forth, you know. Oh, we can't depend on America doing this. All right. Well, we'll, we'll wind up taking over this here role uh, of, you know, doing this here or delegating X, Y and Z, you know. But ultimately, these nations, they got to set in their mind that, yo. In the midst of World War Three, at you know, if if we prevail, whoever is you know, this is like the Royal Rumble, right? This is this is the uh, uh, the Royal Rumble of all nations, man. Once they get into World War Three, whoever in their mind, whoever prevailed, really, whoever prevailed at the end of the day is gonna wind up ruling, right? But we what we just read, hey, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh's gonna send Yahweh Shah to uh, uh to make all these wars to cease, man. 
all right, and break it the bow and st- uh, 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 the break it the bow uh, in asunder, man. All right, so and we can also read about that in uh, Ezekiel thirty nine about how we're gonna take uh, uh, any of the remaining weapons and we're gonna burn them with fire, man. All right, so these nations ain't gonna learn war no more, man. All right, but this is gonna be the final war. All right, you basically got like two wars, uh, about two or three more wars is gonna happen, you know. But you you know you got civil and race wars and stuff like that on a small local level. All right, you got World War Three, which is the big you know the big shebang, and then you got like World War Three, you know, one point two when Yahusha joined the fight, man. All right, but nevertheless, you know, and that that's you know basically World War Three is the end all be all, man. All right, because once Yahusha come in them chariots, man, it's not gonna be no more war after that, man. Who's gonna challenge the Lord after this situation, man? Think back into Egypt once we left Egypt and they seen the, the uh, desolation that the, the Most High made in Egypt. That, that's what like uh, I believe her name was Rahab said. Look, man, the men of our city, they 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 heard about your power. They seen what he did over in Egypt, man, and they they hearts are melting. They in fear, man. All right, so they hey, they're gonna be troubled, man. We go from here to uh, I quoted a couple of scriptures. Okay, Joel uh, three and two it says, "I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land." So this is you know when the Lord is gonna go forth to judge, man. All right, in the middle of uh, uh, World War Three, all right, because of the fact of what they did to the children of Israel, all right, they being put into a trick bag to be uh, brought over to the Middle East, soften each other up, and you know set the stage for Yahweh to return and ultimately decimate all the all the Earth's armies. All right, let me jump down to verse nine. It says, "Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks and the spears, let the weak say I am strong." Assemble yourselves, you know, going into that, hey, first of all, we are proclaim, proclaiming this among the heathen that, hey, World War Three is around the corner, man. You know what I'm saying? You got thermonuclear missiles that's going to turn America into the lake of fire, man. All right, you're going to, we tell you about the wars and rumors of war, about the war of Gog and Magog, where, where Russia's going to wind up uh, getting a conglomeration of nations to come up against America, man. All right, and you start to see all these things happen, man. All right, it says, beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks and the spears, let the weak say I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. So basically, basically, uh, uh, this is in the midst of World War Three. The Lord is working on the minds of the kings right now and, and bringing them uh, uh, over into the Middle East. All right, you see, him, damn near every nation is over in the Middle East right now, but they're constantly just putting more and more troops over there, man. Ultimately, for this ultimate fight, man. Verse. Uh, 12 let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat for there will I sit and judge all the heathen round about all right so this is when you know the Lord's judgment day when he come down and judge all these other nations man this is where it's going to be at in the midst of World War III we just read up above how they're going to be all gathered into the valley of Yahweh Shapat all right basically to, to battle you know what I'm saying for World War III all right but then in the same spot is when the Lord's going to come back to judge them all right it says, verse 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for there will I sit to judge all nations round about. Verse 13, put, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. All right. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of dis decisions, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decisions. All right. And so this is what it's talking about. Them going over to the, uh, the valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right. And basically, all these different nations are going to be over there for World War Three. It says multitudes, multitudes in the Valley of Decisions. All right. So basically, this is the midst of World War Three. All right. Let me just keep reading. Verse uh, fifteen: The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their their shining. You know, going into what when when those nukes go off, Yahweh shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jer Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh shall be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So when is the whole earth going to shake? Uh, it's going to shake, you know, to and fro like a drunkard uh, uh, or, or move, be removed out of his place. All right. When all these thermonuclear missiles start touching down and hitting the earth all at one time, man. All right. Because the scripture say in one hour and one day in one hour, Babylon's going to be taken. All right. Babylon's going to fall in one hour. So if you could imagine from coast to coast, all of America being bombarded with missiles. All right. It's going to cause the whole earth to shake, man. All right. And when is when is this going to happen? All right, this is going to happen at, basically at the end of World War III. All right, this is how World War III ends, where everybody shoot their missiles over here on America, man. All right? And then we also know at the same time, them chariots is going to wind up saving the elect, all right, beaming them up, and then finishing off uh, finishing off the damn work uh, uh, of these nations, man. 
Verse 16, Yahweh shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh shall uh, Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of his of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I I am Yahweh, your, your power dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall be no strangers that pass through her anymore. Uh, let me jump down, verse 19. And Egypt shall be desolate, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. All right, so basically, when the Lord is coming back to judge Esau for his violence against his brother Jacob, all right, it's going to be in the midst of what? World War Three. all right? You know, and putting that together, the Lord is going to come back to judge him in the midst of World War Three, right? So, um, I thought of this too as well. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince who was standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble since there was never since there was a nation. Even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that should be found written in the book. Right? So this is basically talking about, you know, in the midst of Jacob's trouble. Right. And we also know that Jacob's trouble is going to come basically right before uh, World War Three is going to happen. You know, and we see this starting to boil over with this here persecution coming down. You know, they're trying to slander the men of the Lord's name. But once they start rolling on us hard, man. All right. And that martial law start forcing the chip, man. World War Three is going to come right after that, man. All right. And in the midst of World War Three is when Yahweh is going to return and make these uh, nations desolate, man. So, um. You know, the point here, it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And there should be a time of trouble since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time shall thy people be delivered, everyone that should be found written in the book. There's a precept that goes to that as well, too, in Revelation 12. Uh, I don't know what verse it is, though. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was a war in heaven. All right. Now, this is. You know, the Christians will talk about this is like in the uh, the actual spirit realm, all right, where the Lord, where Yahweh is at, you know. But no, this is talking about basically the war in heaven is basically talking about, uh, uh, you know, up up in the sky, basically. You know what I'm saying? And then also they jockeying for position. You got to understand uh, uh, this is in the midst of World War Three. They trying to see who's going to, you know, Esau right now is in the ultimate heaven. He's reigning over the whole earth, man. All right. He get whatever he want, whatever, whatnot, you know. But nevertheless, there's going to be a war. All right. Up in heaven. All right. You know. Physically in the sky, right? Because what you have happening is you're going to have Esau with his fighter jets and his satellites and all these different things that he's using as, as his weapons. But the Lord's coming back in his chariots, man. So you're going to see a massive, uh, how they call it, like in the, uh, uh, the Air Force, I guess, a dog fight, man. It's going to be a, a massive aerial fight, man. Verse 7, and there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, right? And we know that M Michael is the, uh is an archangel, you know, he's going to basically be like one of the uh, chief captains of the damn, uh, uh, well, of the armies of uh, of the angels, you know. Verse 7 again, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, or, and the dragon fought and his angels, all right, so the dragon is basically going into Esau, man, all right, and his angels are talking about what? Those fighter jets, man, and the technology and all the stuff that they got in there, all right, and all they're doing is basically mocking and mimicking spiritual powers and the things that the Lord got. Verse 8, and, and, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Let me read that again. Verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he deceived the whole the whole world. And that's who's doing that right now. Esau Edom. All right. But nevertheless, there was this war in heaven. All right. And Michael and his angels fought, you know, when Yahweh shot come back, they're going to be fighting against uh, Esau and, and their armies, just like Ronald Reagan said with the Star Wars program. We could be fighting each other, warning each other. But then all of a sudden there's some outside threat. How quick will we find out that our differences ain't that that different and we will band together and fight that outside force. All right. So this is what you have going on right now, man. All right. Uh. Let me go from there real quick to, um, oh, I will not meet thee as a man. Where's that at? Isaiah. So like, give me one second. This is a good chapter too, because it's talking about, you know, the downfall of Esau as well too. Not meet thee as a man. It's in, uh, t -t 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 -t. Oh, 
Psalms 47, and I'll read from verse 1 to, uh, oh man, 1 to 5. It says, come down, sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, all right? And and, and America is the, the, the daughter of Babylon first and foremost, because why? It's got the same, basically it's running the same way that Babylon was being ran, you know, all these different nations. They didn't took all the uh, uh, customs and brought it all over here and, and meshed it all together, man, all right? It says, um, and also virgin, right? Because this this here, uh, America ain't never been touched as far as some foreign uh, warfare on its American, main American soil, all right? But this, you know, if you read on down, you know what I'm saying? It's basically telling you, like, yo, man, you're not going to sit untouched forever, man. You finna get fucked in this situation, man. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit sit on the ground. There is no throne, all right? So as we was talking, we just read there, uh, there was a war in heaven. All right, but then we also read how Yahweh was going to go forth uh, 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 to make to wage war, and he had on his head the many crowns of these different kings. All right, so that's why it says here there is no throne because right now Esau is ruling; he's on his throne right now, man. But the Lord is coming to take him up off his throne uh, uh, to, to dethrone him and take his crown off his head, man. It says there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt be no more called tender and <laughs> tender and delicate, taking millstone and grind mill. Uncover thy locks, make bare the la the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. And that's what you see going on right now, man. America's ultimately being destroyed, all right, and exposed, man. It says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man, all right? So right now, all the, all the atrocities, the all the bullshit that America's been doing is now being exposed, you know? Uh, how they dominating and overthrowing these different governments, so on and so forth, which is making these other nations... Get mad at America and putting the spirit on them to want to wage war against America. All right, but then Esau over here in America also getting mad and knowing he got but a short time, so he come down with great wrath, developing all these new technologies, AI and these robots and everything like that. All right, but nevertheless, what did the Lord say? It says, "I will not meet thee as a man." All right, so really, Esau only thing he can do is try to prepare based off of what he know against human beings. Esau don't know how to defend himself against uh, Leviathan, or if you know you want to understand what Leviathan is, Godzilla. You see what I'm saying? You don't know how to, bro, like the real Godzilla, not not the shit that you see on TV, man. A fire, big ass fire breathing dragon. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, you know, this is uh, 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 going to be on a whole nother level, man. All right. Uh, think about uh, the Apoc uh, X-Men Apocalypse movie, man. All right. Where you had, uh, what's that big blue dude name? Was it Thanos? Whatever his name was. But homeboy, yo, it's like, you know, fighting these dudes with their superpowers or whatever. What? And I'd be like, yo, bro, I'm not going to meet you. On your level, I'm going to be far above you. If I snap my fingers, all y'all going to just disappear, man. I don't have to sit here and fight you guys. Or not only that, I can go inside your mind and make you fight yourself, you know. But just like in the same sense of when he took uh, took over the minds of all these military men and made them all launch these damn uh, ICBM missiles, man. The same thing, man. All right. But nevertheless, you know, the Lord is the one that's ultimately in control of all that. All right. So it says, uh, let me read that again. Verse 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, there's... Thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. It's lucky. So Yahweh shall when he's returning, he's not gonna come back like he came the first time, you know, as mere mortal or whatever, whatnot, where you could put him to death, you could subdue him, you could starve him out, you know, you can make him run for so long, he's gonna get tired or whatever, whatnot. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna be able to read your mind and discern what's going on. No, man. You seen the power that Yahweh had when he was on earth beforehand. Just think about when he comes back in his full glory, man. All right. But nevertheless, says, I would not meet thee as a man. So this is when the Lord is going to come back in them damn chariots. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, verse five, sit thou and get into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for that for thou shall be no more called the lady of kingdoms. All right. <clears throat> That's what it's talking about. Uh, let me read down a little bit. Uh, verse seven and thou. Saith, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to heart, neither did thou remember the latter end of it. All right? Talking about, you know, when they they, they basically uh, uh, took over the Israelites, brought us over here, you know what I'm saying? They started prospering. They thought that this, this thing going to go on forever, man. But they didn't uh, count the, the, the latter end. They didn't count the cost of what they wound up doing, you know? They didn't look at the bill. You know, they just in the damn store, charge it, charge it, charge it. I'll take this one. I'll take that one. I'll take this one. I'll take that one. I'll take this one. Then ultimately, before you walk out the store, you know what I'm saying? They're like, all right, we're going to ring up all your items, and it's going to cost you $15 billion dollars. You're like, what you mean? You know, but nevertheless, hey, this is what's going on here. It says, uh, verse 7, 
and thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to heart, neither did thou remember the latter end of it. All right. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures that dwell carelessly, that saith in thy heart. All right. And these Americans uh, dwell carelessly. You know, you got this situation going on with Iran. Go on, a, on a, um, the streets and ask people about Iran or whatever. Ask them what's going on politically. Every last one of them tell you, Donald Trump's the president. That's all I know. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, they, they you know, they just living it up over here, right? But these other nations, they understand because they're constantly being bombarded by Esau. Right? Or they're preparing for war. They know that they're about to go to World War III. But here in America, they just, oh, everything's all good. It says, um, verse 8, Therefore now hear this, thou that art given to pleasures that dwell carelessly, that saith in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. All right? Going into, you know, the pride of these Americans, you know? We, we the, the, you know, only, only America do it like this. It says, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. So basically, they think that they're going to go on forever. They think that America's going to go on forever and into eternity. Verse 9, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment and one day. All right? For in one hour, one day, all right, is when his destruction cometh. It says the loss of children of and widowhood, and they shall come upon uh, thee in their perfection and the multitude of sorceries for for the great abundance of thy enchantment. All right. So basically, what we're reading here is how when Yahweh shall return, he's not gonna come back in his regular uh how you know how he's walked the earth the first time in flesh. He's coming back in this angelic force, all right, to wage war up against these damn heathens. Right? So let me grab we, we bring this out quite often. Um I don't know what verse it is. Oh no, it's locked. Second Ezra 13. This is Second Ezra 13 and 2. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man uh, waxed strong with the thousands of heavens of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. All right. So basically it's talking about the Lord coming back and these chariots. All right. And and basically he got, you know, multiple chariots with him. All right. And then also these people are afraid when they see it. Verse 4, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice like as the earth filleth when it filleth the fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was a gathered together a multitude of men out of the, out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came from the sea. And I beheld, and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. All right? So basically, we was reading this. Why the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? Let us break their cords asunder. So basically, they think that they're going to wind up fighting Yahweh and prevailing. All right? Verse 7, I would have seen the region or the place where, where out the hill was graven, but I could not. Because this, this chariot was so big, it took up the whole peripheral vision as you look it up into the sky. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him, like we just read earlier, why do the heathen ra rage and imagine the vain things, man? They planning on cutting Yahweh off so they can reign next, all right? It says, after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, yet durst fight. All right, so they're going to be scared when they see these chariots, but the, the Lord is going to ultimately put these, the spirit on them of courage to fight him anyway. That's the worst. Hey, that's why you don't want to fuck with the most high in his son, man. All right, because that might not even be in your mindset. You might have seen the chariot, but like, you know what? I didn't hear about them Israelites. They right or whatever, whatnot. Uh, I, man, I don't even need to be fighting in the white man's military. Let me turn my plane back around and land this bitch in the projects one time and get up off of this bitch, right? But then ultimately, is the Lord is going to be the one to put the spirit on you to stay into the fight and fight up, up, up against him, all right? And lo, I saw the verse nine. And lo, I saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war, but only I saw as he sat, sent out of his mouth as if it were a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue cast out sparks and tempests. All right, you know, going into the laser beams. But let me just get down to the point. Um, Second Ezra 13 and 25. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same is he whom the most high, the highest, have kept in a great season, by which by his own self shall deliver his creature, he shall order them that are left behind. Alright, so this, you know, this is backing up what we read, you know, up a little bit higher up. You know, this is Yahweh shot is coming back in that big fathership, right? Verse 27. And whereas thou saw that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind, fire, and storm. And that he held neither sword nor instrument, but that of the rushing, uh, uh, but that, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. And this is the interpretation. All right. So basically, um, let me go back up because I actually skipped that verse. 
for time's sake. But nevertheless, um, it's the one I missed, verse 11. Let me start at 10. And I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire out of his lips of flaming breath. And out of his tongue, he cast out uh, sparks and tempest. And all they were mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest fell, fell with us upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burn them up, every one, so that all of a sudden an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, only dust and the smell of smoke. And after this, I was afraid. So this is in the midst of World War III. When all these nations are going to be fighting each other, they're going to band together. All right, and then uh, uh, put their aim towards Yahweh Shah to actually fight against him. All right. This is, uh, we'll start at verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come, with, come to astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, one realm against another, right? Like I mentioned earlier off, you know, you know, technically there's only one war left or, you know, you could say there's only one war left, which is World War Three. But technically you got like, you know, the race wars and all this, this the shit that they're going to, you know, pop off with here in this, uh, the civilized, you know, the, uh, what do they call that shit? A, a civil war type of shit that's going to take place here in America amongst the citizens. All right. But then you also got World War Three with the military that's going to take place. And then in the midst of all that, your house is going to return to finish them all off. All right, so this is what you're reading about in verse 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another, all right? And one city against another, all right? So basically, you know, going into all these things on a small local level, one place against another, one people against another. I, you know, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, so on and so forth. All right, this is the same thing that's going on here, all right? One place against another, one people against another, one realm against another. So we started out by reading about how Michael and his archangels are going to fight against the dragon, all right, or uh, Yahushua is going to fight against the damn dragon, all right, which is, you know, Yahushua and, 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 you know, the angels coming back to, to, to fight against Esau and his militaries, all right, so it says, um, one shall undertake to fight against another, a slot, verse 32, and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs that shall happen, which I showed thee before, and then shall I, then shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man descending. All right. So that man that graven out that image was Yahweh Shah. And he's also taking the crowns off the kings of these, the crowns off these kings heads. All right. And when, and when all the people hear the voice, every man sh uh, shall in his own land leave the battle, having they one against another. So all these different people from their different lands going to leave the damn battle. All right. So they having a, a war with each other. What does that uh, call for? Basically World War Three. You got all these different nations fighting amongst each other. Verse 34, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, and when thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting, but he shall stand upon Mount Zion, and Zion shall shall come, and he shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built it like thou hast sawest the, the hill graven with thy hands, all right? So basically going into all these things, man, this is when Yahweh is going to return, man, in the midst of World War Three when they're fighting each other, man. They're going to stop fighting each other, and they're going to uh, change their, their, their focus onto fighting uh, against the Lord and his angels, man. But ultimately, the Lord's going to have their ass in derision, man. They're going to they be afraid. The Lord going to put the spirit on them to keep fighting. And he's going to just laugh at their ass as they're getting stomped out, man. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and close out with that. Lord willing, this here lesson was edifying unto the elect. Until next time, I say, call halal Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakak Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth and that rule well. And salutation and much love for you, Aki, and pushing this truth and sincerity on the four corners of the earth and enduring afflictions to feed and edify the elect. Until next time, I say, stay strong. Shalom.